We thank you, O oh Lord God, for showing us a secret place, O oh Lord God. Hallelujah. A secret tabernacle, hallelujah. A secret portal, hallelujah. We come to thank you, Lord God, for loving us enough, O oh Lord God, for showing us the hiding place. Under the rock, hallelujah. Under the rock, O oh Lord God. The rock is higher than I, hallelujah. The rock is higher than I, hallelujah. Oh, Yahweh, oh, Lord, have mercy, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the mighty God of Zion. He is the merciful one, Emperor Lord, Yahweh, oh Adonai, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Mikadishkam, Jehovah Rehoboth, Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Oh Holy Spirit, come into this place now and sup with us, O oh Lord God. Touch our minds, touch our hearts, touch our bodies. Heal our minds, heal our bodies, heal our speech. Hallelujah. The power of life and death lies in the tongue. Heal our speech, Lord God. Heal our words, O oh Lord God. Cause us to say the right things at the right times. Cause us to speak healing words. Hallelujah. Not curse words, oh Lord. Praise his name, oh Lord God. You are worthy, Abba. You are worthy, oh. Who is worthy to open the scrolls? The Lamb of God. And we receive the Lamb in this place today by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I go to make a place for you. Hallelujah. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. And I go to make a place for you. When you know that you are the inheritant of a mansion, you don't have fear. You don't have doubt. You don't have worry. Why? Because you have the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Because you got some keys, hallelujah, to the Lord's kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. It says in Revelation that this kingdom will be like a city of glass. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord God, for saturating the air in this place with your presence. Thank you, Lord God, for coming into our sanctuary. I'm Reverend Dr. Simone Lord Marcel, and I just want to welcome you to Inspire New York, People's First Baptist Church. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God a praise. praise Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you got something to be thankful for, thank him. Hallelujah. Your days are not guaranteed on this earth. If you thankful for life this morning, this afternoon, this day, you're up, you're alive, you're alive. Oh, thank you, Lord God. They drop it like flies, but we're alive. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for my breath, oh Lord God, the breath of life. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that I, that I can stand up and praise you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that I can sing for you. Thank you, Lord, I can dance for you. Thank you, Lord, I got some energy. I can praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not laying sick somewhere, Father God. We ask you, oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to touch everybody that's laying sick right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, wake up. <laughs> Wake up, hallelujah, come to life, come to life, Yahweh, Yahweh, hallelujah, 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 just touch the screen, just, just raise your hand and, and declare that he is God, that he is able to heal the sick, in the name of 
Jesus, that Jesus is able to heal your body. Right now, in the name of Jesus, speak the blessing, hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak the blessing over your life. Speak the blessing over your children's life. Speak the blessings, hallelujah, over your grandchildren, hallelujah. The ones here and the ones to come, hallelujah, that you're going to live and not die. That you're going to see them grow up, hallelujah, to be a big man, to be king, to be queen, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Invite your children into the sanctuary. They're going to come in here and praise God with us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. They might not have come to church with you today. But they are your loved ones. And so you bring them into the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. Let us wait for them to come in in the spirit. Amen. 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 Come on now, kids. Come on now, children. Come on now, Kashif Hadia, Matthew, Ayla, Alicia. Come on now, Eva. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now, Malcolm. Come on now. Come on now. And we salute our ancestors. Hey, they're here with us also. Thank you, Lord God. We remember you. We remember you, mommy. We remember you. We remember you, Papa Marcel. We remember you, Dr. Cleveland. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the memories of those that have lost their lives to the COVID. We thank you, Lord God, for the memory that those that lost their life September 11th. We thank you, Lord God, for saving us and for saving our families in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for putting a seal of protection on us in the name of Jesus so that no weapon formed against us and our families, no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And every life done shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for the victory. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for the outpouring of your spirit on this place. We thank you, Lord God, for changing us, oh Lord God, for touching us, oh God, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for saving our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for saving our children's lives. Thank you, Lord God, for saving our cousins, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers. That they haven't gone home to meet you yet, Lord. We thank you now, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching this church, oh Lord God, so that we can reach the four corners of the earth in the name of Jesus, so that we can speak healing, so that we can speak blessings in the name of Jesus to the remnants, to the ones that are here still in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord God, so I can continue your message in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have your way in this place, Lord. Have yes. your way. Touch our minds. Yes. Heal us, Lord God. Shalom. 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 What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven is our victory. Heaven is our victory. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. Without the love, if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love in my heart, I gain nothing. Mm -hmm. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. Mm -hmm. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Love is healing. They didn't say that there, but I've come to realize that love heals. It actually heals. It is a substance that heals. You know, People talk about love a lot, but there are some people who were not taught how to love. And so there are people that when we start talking about all this love and stuff, they go like, in their mind, they say, what that? <laughs> so what, what that mean? What is that? Love. There are some people who have not experienced love. Did you know that? Yes. There's a lot of people right now who cannot experience love, don't know how. So today, I just want to show you how to love someone. You see, when you love someone, you don't criticize everything that they do, calling it constructive criticism. For the educated people who admire constructive criticism, and say, oh, constructive criticism is great, and I would love people to constructively criticize me all the time because I like that kind of thing. Show me where I'm going wrong so I can correct myself. There are people like that, okay? I'm actually one of them. <laughs> For the rest of the people, constructive criticism is a nag. Over and over. It doesn't have to be a parent or a spouse. It could be that voice in your head <laughs> called the enemy trying to beat you down in your mind. Constantly criticizing you in your mind about all the things that you've ever done wrong in your mind. Back, remember 20 years ago? <laughs> remember what happened then? <laughs> okay. I'm in 2021 now. Forget it. Leave me alone. <laughs> but we don't talk back to the enemy in our minds the way we should. Instead, we allow the enemy to beat us up in our minds. To keep, us, keep on telling us about all the things we did wrong. And we keep on harping on those things in our mind, which is not the correct way to go about healing. In order to heal, as Apostle Paul says, you have to think, not of all the things that you are not. I'm not this, I'm not that. She is. Let me envy her, let me envy him. I'm not this, I don't have this, I don't have a that, I don't have nobody, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have a place, I don't have that, that. Over and over and over, we keep on hopping over all the things that we don't have. Well, if you keep on thinking of the things you don't have, 
it will just make it bigger. Apostle Paul says, think on whatsoever is lovely, not the things you don't have. He didn't say, think all the time, constantly on what you don't have. He didn't say that. He said, think about all the things that are lovely. Think of all the things that are beautiful, nice thoughts. You ought to be thinking nice thoughts so that you can use the new power that we have, which is the power that we learn to speak the blessings, right? Yes. Have you guys been using this new power? Amen. Amen. Have you been using it? Anybody have been using it? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I've been using it. Amen. I've been using it, and I've been seeing great, 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 great results. Amen. Amen. So, when we are in a place where we don't know how to love, okay, we have to learn how to unlock the secrets, the secret to happiness. So it's a little bit, a little difficult what I'm trying to show you, but the message today is called the secret to happiness. So we are unlocking the secret. And the secret to happiness is the place where we will find God. That is the secret place of his tabernacle. The place where he will hide us. This is the place we are going to. As it says in Revelation, this New Jerusalem, this promised land. Some people even call it the vortex. It's like a portal. It's a new dimension. It is a place where we can escape to, where we don't have to suffer the tribulations that are coming, the plagues that are being released onto mankind at this time. There are many, many, many people suffering across the world. And I'm here to tell you that the secret potion is love. And so since you have not really learned how to love really good, maybe your dad left you when you were four, and you don't know about love because he left you and that pain has been there forever still. You're still full in your mind, like, Daddy, why you leave me? Why? Why you leave me? Maybe it happened at 11, when your mom left. Maybe somebody's mom left. Maybe they didn't leave the building, but maybe they left you emotionally. Maybe they were strung out on drugs. I don't know what happened. You know what your situation is. But somebody left. Somebody didn't love you. And now you feel unloved and unworthy. And now I'm here to tell you, you got to love and it's the antidote. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I don't got nobody to love. I don't know how to love. So I want to tell you that love is like a new dimension that you go into. Love is, is, is smiling at someone. Love is loving the people. Love is having reached to that place in your mind, in your heart, mm -hmm. where, you know, I just love you. Mm -hmm. I can't explain why I love you, but I got the love of Jesus in my heart, mm -hmm. and I just love you. Mm -hmm. I can't explain why, but it's a godly love. It's an agape love mm -hmm. that I have for you, mm -hmm. and it comes from the Lord himself. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And why? He says, because you're worthy. You are worthy to be loved because you are his creation. Amen. And the enemy want to tell you that you are not worthy to be loved? To be loved? Don't believe the enemy anymore. Don't believe his lies. You are worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm lovable. Yeah. Very lovable. Yeah. I'm lovable. Love exactly lovable. And I love people. Right? You have to say, I love people. I love people. I'm gonna find good things in everybody. I'm not gonna overly criticize. I'm not gonna constructively criticize all the time. I'm gonna just love them. Just love them. Hallelujah. 
Happiness is where we are content, where we are not anxious. Where we are not, well, God, what, when, when, what, when you're going to send for me, when you're going to bless me, everybody else is getting blessed, and what about me, when is my time coming, um, how come I'm still suffering, how come I'm still going through all of this stuff, Lord, 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 what about me? God said his grace is sufficient. Every time. And when you're into this new place that he sent us in, the secret place, the secret tabernacle of the Most High, when we, agree, when we achieve that state of mind, that's when we can get to happy. This is the, the road map to happy. When we can achieve a state of mind where we are content, like Paul said, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I found myself in. That means if it's cold winter, dead, dead winter, minus 10 degrees, God forbid, we will be content. We will adapt. Yes. Amen? If it's Amen. extremely hot and it feels like hell, hmm. we will adapt yes. because we can withstand everything. We can overcome. Amen. And to the ones who can overcome, we get the reward. Amen. So you got to stand up, keep standing, you got to hang in there, you got to hold on, because there's a reward coming yes. to the ones who could endure, to the ones who could overcome. Yes. And it's not easy to overcome, it's not easy to keep standing when your body might be feeling weak, or your mind might be feeling weak, it's not easy. But God said that if you can just hold on, if you can just keep standing. He said, if you could just be strong in his mighty power under his wings. He got some big, big wings. And then they, oh, they hold you like this. You can hide right under those wings. It's a beautiful thing to know that you serve a God who got some mighty wings. So that means you don't have to be afraid. When you serve a God that has some mighty, mighty wings and that commands the heaven and the seas, yeah. You don't have to be afraid of man. Amen. What can man do to you when you serve a God that big? Nothing. This is where we learn not to have fear then. Because we can always go somewhere else. You see, people might be running scared. Don't know where to go to hide. But I want to introduce you to Adonai. Hey! Amen. Hallelujah! I want to introduce you to Yahweh. Hallelujah. I want to introduce you to Yeshua, his son. The lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Love is the key to being content. When we stay in a loving state, and it's not easy, easy to stay always in a loving state. Because sometimes that mouth of ours will cut somebody out with the quickness. But when we can stay in that loving state, listening to each other, speaking blessings, right? Learning the power to speak blessings, taking care of our bodies, our minds, and spirit, we emerge stronger on the other side. The mountain moves and we emerge stronger. So today I'm showing you how to get past the mountain. How to move the mountain through faith. We've been covering that. So I think that y'all might know now how to move mountains out of your lives. Because we've been covering that. And if you haven't been here, you got to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you don't miss a beat. Because these are some critical times that we are living in. These are some very dangerous times. These are times where we got to sleep in our armor on. The full armor. The helmet of salvation. We got to pop that sword right there by the bedside. Where's your sword? Is it at your bedside? Where's your sword? Where's your sword? Is your sword, the word, is it at your bedside in the night? Mm -hmm. If it's not, then we got us a little bit of a problem. Because when the enemy comes, hallelujah, if that sword is not there, they think they could. Get in your mind and give you bad dreams. There's something called spirit husband and spirit wives. They think they could come and do you in your dreams. There's some serious stuff going on. 
principalities. Okay, evil. And we are the target because we are God's beloved. We are his beloved, so we are the target. This is not a controversy theory. This is a war. And so if you don't have a strategy to win the war, then you just might become a casualty. People are falling like flies as we speak. So if you don't have a strategy to win this, if, you don't, if you're not on the winning team, by the way, and the winning team might be a small minority, like it might not be the whole world, because the whole world is following the beast. The whole world is following the media who has control of many people's minds. So if you don't have a strategy, you'll be left out there yes. by yourself. Yes. You got to have a strategy to join the winning team. Yes. And that's Team Lord, Team Jesus, yes. Team Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Team Alpha and Omega. Yes. Amen. 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 So what is your strategy? Because the enemy, his strategy right now is paid off big, guys. He has a really good strategy. Let us seduce the minds of the world through Wi-Fi. Mm. Through the media. Let us give them all sorts of news that can shut their entire system. That can fear, make them fear the night. A lot of people not sleeping because they are afraid of the night. If you can get you some sleep, you got to do the victory dance because you're one of the winners if you're getting you some sleep. Because so many people cannot sleep because they cannot get to that secret place in their minds where they can be content with whatever they have, even with whatever they don't have. All the things you don't have, you still have to be content. Yes. Amen? Amen? Those things, you have to call them into existence. Because that is the power that we've learned. That is the one superpower that got Moses in trouble. What's this one superpower that God wanted his children to know that got Moses barred from the promised land? What is this superpower then? The power to speak blessings. You see, Moses was angry. And they don't have anger and stuff like that in the promised land. In this secret to happiness. In this tabernacle of the Most High, anger don't belong there. Rage doesn't belong there. Mm -hmm. But Moses was under duress. Moses was stressed yes. out by those people, bickering, constructively criticizing him all the time. Complaining. Complaining. Nagging. Moses this. Moses that. Moses this. Come on, you brought us here to die, didn't you? What God you serve? They was going at it with Moses. And God said, Moses, I want you to speak to the rock and command water from that rock. And Moses didn't listen to the directions carefully and he got this barred from the promised land. He was not allowed to enter after he had done so much work. Instead, Moses was mad and he struck the rock. Right. There's that water y'all wanted. Drink it. You wanted water, right? Mm -hmm. Here it is. <laughs> so Moses struck the rock instead of speaking the blessing. Just speak to the rock. Right. But thank God we found it. So now we know the blessing, the superpower that we need to enter the secret place, the tabernacle, this hiding place, this place, this, this glass place, as it says in Revelation, it's a place of glass. When a place is made of glass, that means you could just step in and 
You could just step in because it's made of glass. Are you following me? Yes. Are you, are you coming to see what we're trying to say? Yes. There's a place that God has taken us to where we can hide. Where we can escape the pain of this world. Because it says in the Bible that we are not of this world. We are in this world. But we are not of this world. We are different. We are peculiar people. We are called to grace. By the very fact that you're here today means that you're one of those very special people that are called to grace. If you are receiving this message today, wherever you are receiving it, it means that you and us, if you're understanding it, if you're wise enough to understand what is being said here, the message that is being parlayed, that means that you are being called. You're being summoned by the Lord into this new place, a place where his children can hide, be safe, under his wings, mm -hmm. hallelujah, from all the plagues, from all the pestilence that are coming and are here and that are yet to come. Mm -hmm. It's a secret place where we can be happy, where we are going to be content. Mm -hmm. But when we go in this place, we got to leave the anger. Mm -hmm. We got to leave all the doubt. Mm -hmm. I don't know about this secret place. Where that at? You got to leave that to the back. I'm going. Y'all going to a secret place where the Lord is and where you have power to speak blessings? Hello? Anybody want a ticket? Yes. Now you got me. You got me now? Are you hearing me, sister? Are you understanding what thus says the Lord, my sister? Not yet. Not yet? I understand. Praise God. Are you understanding where we're going? Because this is important. Right? Yes. We, this is how we're going to live. And not die. And not go crazy. And get some sleep for heaven's sake. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. I know I was going to have to ask God to help me preach this. But, well, I do always. Amen. <laughs> okay, there we go. It came back up. Praise God. Praise His name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the weapons of destruction that the enemy is using is the computer and also the phone. Yes. Radioactive waves. Okay, the screen, very, very dangerous to the eyesight. People's eyes being deteriorated rapidly. Young people, old people, especially young people because they spend a lot of time in school, on Zoom. The radio, this is not meant to be 24-7. It's killing our eyesight. It's killing our fiber optic lens behind the eyeballs. It's doing nerve damage. The phone that we so hooked on, the phone that we so radioactive, 5G, okay, all of that good stuff. Okay, radioactive. We need kelp. This is war against God's children. Because when, if they don't get you with COVID, if they don't get you with, they're going to go for the eyesight, they're going to go for the heart attack, they're going to get, you're going to insomnia, to, you can't breathe. Uh, there's a whole movement, I can't breathe movement. Okay, the enemy got that on lockdown. That's his movement. The I can't breathe movement, that's his movement. Because he sure loves those masks. He sure likes to put them on. Keep them on whole day. And keep your eyes glued to the screen. So this way I could wreck havoc on your brains. So that you can deteriorate faster. Uh-huh. That's his plan. So I'm here to show you the strategy so that you can know how to fight back. Right. So you need stuff, nutrients for the vision. Advanced vision, you need nutrients. For our brain, our brain being so much into this computer, the brains are getting declining. So we need nutrients like luteolin, like olive, like the olive purin, 
We need a lot, a lot, a lot of minerals so that we can fight back. Right. Because he's trying to get you one, which way or the other. He's trying to get you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So you got to take good care of your health so that you can stand up and keep standing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Living in the last days, living in this war time, okay, whatever you want to call it, this hell on earth, whatever you want to call it, living, living in these times means that we have to be prepared at all times. Okay. We have to be prepared and strapped at all times. This is not a joke. This is, this is war, as you know. So we have to be strapped at all times. With the, not strapped with guns, strapped with the, the word. We got to put the word, we got to read this more, study it, the whole book of Revelation and ask God so that he could help us to understand it. He will give you a spirit to understand Revelation. So you can start. We've been studying it. Amen. 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 Like any good soldier, we must be prepared to die. I'm going to say that again because like any good soldier, we must be prepared for casualties. Fatalities. Fatalities. You don't pretend that you're living in a world where nobody is dying. People are dying left, right, and center. We have to learn now how to deal with grief. And we have to learn how to deal with stress. There are vitamins and minerals and nutrients that God put on this earth to help us. It's not to be found in a pack of something on a shelf. It's to be found in the earth. It's called plant medicine. And this is what he gave us so that we can stay alive. But instead we want it in a bottle. Instead we want it in a pack. Instead we want it in a box of food on a shelf. He's saying this is not how you're going to survive with processed foods. He's saying the way to survive is to be like on that Daniel diet all the time. You see, Daniel was in captivity. Daniel was going through hell. They had stripped Daniel of all he had. Daniel was a man who knew about war. And being on the losing side too. Because he was in captivity. He could catch you. And what did he do? He changed his diet so he could win. It's the same thing you and I, all of us, must do in order to survive this. We have to change our diet. Things like kelp, seaweed, the, even the sea moss, things like the olive leaf, the extract that even Jesus, the leaves that even Jesus drank, because it's the oldest cultivated tree in the world. Yes. Of course Jesus drank the olive leaves. And I'm not saying that widely. I am a doctor of naturopathy and a pastor. And so I did the research. Mm -hmm. It's the same leaf that they speak about in the book of Revelation. The olive. The olive oil, sacred. Mm -hmm. Olive tea antiviral, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, manage the blood pressure, manage the blood sugar. We need to be drinking it every day. You see, you can't just go around saying, well, I got Jesus. I'm gonna I'm live, not that. <laughs> you have to put the substances into your system, into your mouth. You have to change your diet like Daniel did. You see, Daniel could eat all the rich foods and the meat and the pork and the wine in excess. He could have done that. They told him, hey, you're serving this king now, Nebuchadnezzar. Right. Okay? You can have all you want to eat. Whatever you want to eat, you can eat it. That's what they told Daniel and his buddies. Meshach, Shidrach, and Abednego. But they said, nah. They said, no, bro. We're not eating that food. That food is too rich for us. That food is going to kill us. Because, you know, we, in their minds, they're like, we got to stand. Because we slaves. We got to eat to keep alert. So whenever we get our chance, we can escape this prison. That they, they were in a prison, a mental prison. They were not bound, but they were in a mental prison. They were captured. So in order for you to live, and to fight all of this radioactive attacks from the screens 
and everything. You got to be in a place where you can change your diet. And you have to learn discipline. One way to learn discipline to change our diet is to start a fast. If you can do a five-day fast or a seven-day fast, maybe you can, all you can manage is a three-day fast where you just have one meal and you juice, juice, juice for the rest of the week. Okay, but you want to start a fast so that you can learn the discipline that you need so that your body can get a chance to detox, so your heart can get a chance to catch up because all the heart, you know, you're eating late in the night because you can't sleep, so you go grab some comfort foods. Uh -oh. Right, and now the heart got to try to, oh, let me try to, let me try to um, assimilate, let me try to digest all of this. Woo, system, overload, overload. Oh, now my mind, too much Wi-Fi, get some sleep, can't sleep. System, overload, overload, see? So this is, and it's a cycle. Right. So, you know, just to ask a question, you know, not to scare everybody, but what you gonna do if they turn off the Wi-Fi? Oh, Jesus. Because Wi-Fi was not around. What if the beast was Wi-Fi? What if the beast owned Wi-Fi, people? What if? What if the beast controlled the Wi-Fi? What if? Are we so removed from God that we cannot live without Wi-Fi that is controlled by the beast? Are we? Or are we? What if the enemy decides, you know what, I got them. What if his big strategy is grand finale? I just pulled the Wi-Fi. They will all bow down and serve me there. Mm -hmm. What if that was his plan? No, Children that. of God. You're bigger than Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. You have power to speak blessings. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wow. What about the little children? whose minds they have captivated with Wi-Fi. The little children who woke up, who were born with a cell phone in their hands. <laughs> they came out of the mom room, they're like, you got Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> what's the code? What's, what's the code, mom? <laughs> they've been hearing about this Wi-Fi from since in the mother womb. They've been feeling that radiation coming in like a drug. Wi-Fi. Right? So they come out and they want some Wi-Fi too. Just like if you're overdosing, if you're on heroin and you're having a child, you know what I mean? Your child going to come out like want some heroin. Right. There's babies in the womb. Want to serve the bees? Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The enemy of God's children, as you know, is looking for people to devour. However, whichever way they're looking to devour. We must stay strapped. Hallelujah. We must declare that God is God and that he is able to save us. You must have no doubt that he is able to save us. You have no doubt at all that he is able. My God is able. I don't know about your God, but my God is able. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. And my God shall supply all. Is Wi-Fi a need? Or a want? A want. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So that's why Paul can say with conviction that I have learned how to be happy. Apostle Paul saying it. After he was beaten so much time, he was beaten up, beaten up. Criticize, oh my God, so much trial, so much tribulation. He cried out, God. And God said, my grace, my grace is sufficient. You don't need Wi-Fi. My grace is sufficient. Operate on grace and not Wi-Fi. Let us start thinking just in case the enemy had a plan. Okay? 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Like any good soldier, we got to learn how to handle the casualties, the wounds. You handle the wounds, mental wounds, trauma with love. You bandage it up with love. You paint it with love. Oh, you said you don't feel love. I'm going to just love you. I'm going to paint you red with love. I'm going to put red light of love. I'm going to put white light of love over you and over your children. Over me, I'm going to cast it. Cast you over in love. Hallelujah. Love. It's just going to go out. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That love, that white light surrounding you, lifting you up, hallelujah, giving you power, hallelujah. That white light, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's called love, hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord God, hallelujah. Using the power of love, using a sound of wise mind, and using a discerning spirit, we will be able to see who is who, who is enemy and who is brother, sister. Who mean us good and who mean us bad. This way we can emerge victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you don't have that discerning spirit, you're going to get crooks. It's a war, okay? There's casualties and there's death. If you don't have that discerning spirit to know when your health is suffering and you need to go to the doctor, hallelujah, you need to check out the MD. You need to get an alternative opinion. That's an ND. That's me. Okay? If you don't have a discerning spirit, you'll be a casualty. You gotta get an alternative medicine opinion. Because some of these doctors, I respect them, I love them, they're surgeons, they're skilled, they got all sorts of good education. Skilled surgeons, yes, respect and love. Mm -hmm. However, there's some of them who just wanna cut you for the money. Yeah. There's some of them that just wanna put you on that dialysis machine for the money. Yeah. There's some good doctors out there though. And there's some good surgeons out there. And we respect and love them like no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because their first motto, they told us our first rule is do no harm. That is our first. Amen. Do no harm. Do no harm. But there's some people, some doctors out there who are doing harm. Who are doing harm for the money. No love. They didn't come to love and show you how to take care of your body. They didn't come to tell you what nutrients that your body is lacking in and you need this. Not all of them are nice like that. Yes, some who are just in it for the money. And we all know that. I'm not saying anything wrong. It's the truth. There's some good doctors and there's some doctors who are just in it for the money. They will just prescribe you drug after drug until you have a whole table full of drugs and it's ruining your liver and it's ruining your kidneys and they don't care. You better... Get that drug because I need my money. That's right. Right? That's right? There's some sinister people out there. So if we don't have a discerning spirit, we will not be able to stand and to keep standing. Amen? Amen. Amen. As we prepare for the battle of our minds, we have to live the best life. You got to live each day like it's your best. Like it might be your last. Because this is a war. Come on. In times of war, you gotta live each day like it's your last. You gotta be prepared. You gotta have your emergency preparedness manual or protocol in your house. Like, what am I gonna do in the case of emergency? Who am I gonna call? What is my plan? We need that. We need a will, people. Hello. You want to have your home going to meet Jesus, your celebration, your grand exit to meet the Lord. You know, you dressed to the nine and everything, or if you, you know, want to be cremated. We got to talk about these things. Because we got to leave a will. You want chaos, or you want a beautiful home going to meet the Lord? Beautiful. <laughs> exactly. So if you don't want chaos, you got you to gotta get your business in order. You got to have that will. And no matter how you do it, there's people who make free will. Pro bono attorneys. And if you have money, you go get your oh, get your will. What about your life insurance? Who's gonna who's gonna pay the costs? See, people don't want to talk about all these things, but when you look at it from another point of view, from a, a, a point of maturity, because you know that is inevitable, and so you are not looking to grieve, you're looking to celebrate the memory of this person. 
right? When you can look at it like that, then you're not afraid of death. You see, too many people are afraid of death. You should not be. You're going to meet the Lord. That's it. It's a, it's a beautiful place. You know, you need to have a plan for it, right? Okay, that's it. You gotta have some life insurance because at least day and age, you want to leave something for your kids and for your spouse. You want to make sure because especially in these times that we live in, with so many step families, Ooh, blended families, blended families, mm -hmm. and in, in some countries. Only 10 people could come to the funeral, so who's more important than who? So COVID makes division, tear apart families, no hugging, social distance, no hug, ever. But I need love. Too bad, you got Wi-Fi. <laughs> but I don't want Wi-Fi, I want love, I want a human touch. Too late. You already signed up for the Wi-Fi for the rest of your life. I love it, I love it, I love it. You should be loving Jesus. You should be loving each other. Not Wi-Fi so much. You should not be so dependent on Wi-Fi. Instead, you should be more dependent on Jesus. So when the enemy come to pull the plug, he don't got nothing on you. Because, hey, I don't need Wi-Fi. I got Jesus. I'm just saying, okay, just in case the beast who controls Wi-Fi in case he had a plan. At least that's a strategy. In every army, there's a strategy. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling y'all what God said. And it looks like we're almost done here. He says, he says, live in peace with one another. Speak kindly. Enough of the cuss words already. Come on, can we be adult now and just sip it? Because every time we cuss, we kind of get pulled back onto the promised land, the vortex, the new Jerusalem, the secret place of the happiness, the tabernacle. When we cuss up in there, yo, y'all can we get pushed back. Get out of here with that. So when we go into this new place, smiles, smiles, love, no enmity. Somebody just got a big contract with the multi-million dollar, it wasn't you. Congratulations! Yeah. Be, happy Be happy. You've been toiling long, 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 and somebody just got the promotion, not you? Congratulations! Your day will come. Yeah. There's a season and a time for everything. Ooh, somebody just got on TV, and you're the most beautiful person there is, and it wasn't you? Your time is going to come. God got a time for you. You wait for your time. Congratulate. Yeah. Amen. Congratulate. You might be thinking about it in the night. You might be like, oh Lord, how come, sleep. How come they got me? Go to sleep already. <laughs> <laughs> how come, instead of all of this, how come, how come they got this? Oh, somebody just got a big building and it wasn't you? Congratulations, my yeah. blessing is on the way. I know I'm going to keep on serving God. Yeah. Now, if you keep on with that jealousy, will you be able to enter the secret place, the no. tabernacle of happiness? No. You can't get in there with that. <laughs> you have to leave that baggage out. Absolutely, you can't come up in there with that. You get pushed out. And right now, we're not trying to be pushed out. Right now, we're trying to go into this new place where we got the blessings, where we got the powers to speak those blessings. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. God says he wants us to love one another today. He wants us to forgive each other today. Like in now. If there's somebody that you have war with, words with, enmity with, I don't speak to her, that's my sister. That's my mom, that's my, my brother, but I don't speak to them. That's my dad, I don't speak to them though. Mm -hmm. I want you to make your peace and show love to that person. You got to find a way. You can start by sending them loving thoughts. Mm -hmm. you, can send, you can speak. Before Wi-Fi, we were able, we had power to speak, to communicate to each other yeah, yeah. by the sure. power of the mind. This is where we are going back to now, using the power of our minds. 
and the power to speak blessings. You know that person who you were thinking about them and they just called the you know the phone we used to have a rotary phone? Yes. And they just called and you're thinking about dialing them and they called you? Yes. That's the power of the mind. That's a form of telepathy. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going now. Highly evolved beings. Yes. This is where God has taken us to be highly evolved beings. Yes. Godly beings. Mm -hmm. God's power through us. Mm -hmm. So that we can stand through his mighty power. We serve a big, big God. None like him. And before him there was none. Yes. And there will never be any like him, no matter who tries. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I discovered that love can heal, and I hope that you discovered it here today too, that it can heal. It can heal mental problems. It healed my marriage. It can heal marriages because right now marriages and family are under attack, serious attack, because the enemy of this world hates family. The enemy of this world hates law. The enemy of this world just want to strip you, leave you lonely and forsaken because he wants you to be in his hell. But God said that he will never forsake you. God said that I can do all things through Christ. God said his grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Relationships with your children, all relationships with your spouse, with your boyfriend, girlfriend, all relationships, clients, love can heal all of them. People just want to be loved, and there's some people don't know how to love. It's up to us, superheroes. Your mission. It's the show love. Let them feel the love of God through you. Let them feel the power, the healing power of love through you. Because why am I not going to teach them about love? They can research it all in. Money can buy it. Wi-Fi can give it. Love come, it comes from God. It comes from the heart. It's pure. Hallelujah. It keeps no record of wrongs. It's patient. It's kind. Amen? It's not rude. Amen. It does not delight in evil. It rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always perseveres. Amen? It makes you strong mentally and physically. It makes your loved ones strong. Give them more love. So they could be strong enough to fight. To keep standing and to fight. Give them good foods to eat. Yes. No soda. Uh -oh. Soda is like poison. Yes. If you're still drinking soda right now, you're poisoning your system. At a time when your system needs to be strong to fight and to keep standing. Mm -hmm. Don't poison your system. Love never fails. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand because we see never fails. God never fails. Love never fails. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. You're worshiping today at People's First Baptist Church in Spy, New York. And you can come down 115 42 Suffolk Boulevard. I'm Dr. Simone Lord Marcel, and I'm a doctor of naturopathy as well as a pastor. On behalf of Pastor Martin Marcel, my husband, we welcome you to Inspire New York and to come on down so that you can receive your healing because love heals. You can also subscribe. Please subscribe to the YouTube so that this way you can receive your, your messages every Every Sunday, every time a new message comes out, you will receive, and that's Dr. Simone Lord on YouTube. Thank you so much. May God bless you and keep you this day and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. amen.